So let's talk about how your personality develops over your lifespan. Does it change at all? Yes, it does. The law of impermanence comes into force. Your personality changes at every stage of life. Your values change and follows that your goals change over your lifespan as well. And that is exactly what our model of straight mind is stating. You're setting a specific set of goals in life based on your current self-knowledge. But while working towards those goals and aspirations, you gain new insights and experiences which usually lead to some change in your self-perception, your values and your personality in general. And this then leads to readjusting your life goals. Life is a journey. Of course, change is usually limited to a certain degree, and it's also true that the older you become, the more resistant you are regarding personality change. Nevertheless, our childhood is not the last chapter. There is psychological growth and change throughout your lifespan. So let's look into some research that has been done. Simple graphs. On the x-axis you can see the age in years and the y-axis is basically the amount of this certain trait. And as you can see, your emotional stability is mostly increasing throughout your entire life, especially during your 20s and 30s. And that's, by the way, a common pattern you will once in a while observe. 20 to 40, this is the age range where there's still a lot of change going on. At the end of life, your emotional stability is decreasing slightly, as you can see. I'm not even sure whether that is significant, but I can imagine that it's due to an increased amount of diseases and the awareness that life is actually coming to an end. That is something that needs to be worked out. Conscientiousness. There's hope for all young adults out there. Your conscientiousness level is rising dramatically throughout your 20s and 30s. That doesn't mean that you can relax now and wait until the effect kicks in. And please don't forget that this is just the average that you can see here. So still put effort into increasing your conscientiousness deliberately. If that is what you're aiming for, it's not coming on its own. Of course, before being 20, your conscientiousness level is rather low. There's a lot of stuff to experience. Our prefrontal cortex is still not fully grown, which gives us a hard time to inhibit ourselves from paying attention to unimportant information or keeping us away from activities that are more fun to do in this immediate moment. But the older you get, the more we look for the delayed gratification. And our conscientiousness is apparently increasing from year to year without exception. Openness to experience. There is a high increase until the age of roughly 20. We become adventurous. We want to experience life, learn new things and get to know new people. We become more creative. And it kind of makes sense that this trait is decreasing at the end of life. So let's talk about agreeableness. Really, It's not much to say here, you can see the graph. In general, I think that we can say that all previous traits we analyzed so far are desirable traits. So the higher, the better. And it's the same with agreeableness. Well, you don't want to have the maximum amount of agreeableness because otherwise people just use your flexibility and compromise readiness. But in general, an increase of this trait, as you can see it here, is desirable. Social Vitality. That just means how much you're preferring to live in a community, how much you're relating to human society, how sociable you are and seeking social contact. There's a peak while you're 20 and after 25, it decreases. Abraham Maslow actually basically talked about social vitality in relation to self-actualization. He stated that self-actualized human beings show the symptom of enjoying a decent amount of time on their own, not socializing. Please be aware that that not socializing does not lead you to become self-actualized. I think that's a one-way causality. And 
Lastly, social dominance. This is based on the fact that humans have an evolved tendency to form group-based social hierarchies. And if you have a high social dominance, you are higher ranked in the group. In this case, the older you become, the higher you usually climb the social ladder and therefore yield a higher social dominance throughout your lifespan. By the way, there is a correlation between being married but also having a committed career track in life with social dominance, conscientiousness and emotional stability. So being married and having a committed career might lead to an especially increased characteristic of those three traits. In the end, there are as always individual differences. There are tons of unique patterns of development at all stages of life. Mostly specific life events and experiences are responsible for that. In fact, until the age of 25 years, it is still relatively easy to change specific aspects of one's behavior and partly one's personality. Later on, people still can change, but they learn best through massive trauma. Getting divorced, being broke, or their child dies might be one of those trigger points. In general, we can say that time mostly has a positive effect on our personality. And I'm asking you right now, can you confirm this development? Did you experience something else? Please let us know in the comment section below. And if you want to gain a much deeper understanding of life and yourself, if you want to become your own best version in a healthy and sustainable way, then subscribe this YouTube channel for weekly videos and give it a thumb up. It will also make the video more visible for others. And I will also leave you a link in the description box if you're interested in a personality assessment based on the Hexaco, which is the current cutting edge personality test of research. Then check that out. And otherwise, I see you next week as every week. Oh, I'm still searching.